E3 2020 got completely cancelled because of the coronavirus. It was a big deal back then and it was not like taken care of properly. 2021, a virtual event. So you would think that for this year, 2022, for the first time we get a fully packed attendance since 2019. For us wrestling fans, WrestleMania is doing the same thing in just Saturday, just tomorrow and after tomorrow. So you think that they'll do the same, but um, no. Looks like the ESA has confirmed that E3 will not be taking place this year. Effective immediately. So I don't know how to feel about this because on one hand, maybe. Like, it's so conflicted, honestly, because they said that they want to plan a comeback for 20, bigger comeback for 2023. And just to show you guys a screenshot, like, from these tweets, this looks pretty official. At least for me, it is. And then, uh, our, the, the great Jeff Keighley, at the exact same time, replied with this little tweet of a winky face. Oh, Jeff, how sneaky yet predictable you are. Summer Games Fest takes place in June, isn't it? Well, at least that could be the the sign from that. And as far as like the the rest of this stuff goes, it's a bit disappointing because we really could have seen a lot of good stuff in E3 this year. But it's cancelled, then we won't be able to see it. So either, you know, we were still probably gonna get our June June Nintendo Direct and June State of Play, all this stuff. And they're either going to be branded as the month or or they may be a part of the Summer Games Fest. Who knows? But at the moment, I'm a little bit conflicted about uh, E3 2022 being canceled. Because it could have been a good, perfect opportunity. Especially for Nintendo because the Mario movie comes out in, in the holidays. Um, it could have been the perfect time to give us a teaser trailer or something like that. So that's just my opinion on it, honestly. In other news, well... Technically, not really news because it's been around for a few days now, but I just want to share my well, tense thoughts about this. So, the first Sonic movie, in my opinion, didn't really deserve the critical score it got with a 63% of Rotten Tomatoes and a 93% audience score. Um, me personally, that score would be around the 70% mark. If I'm feeling generous, the 80%, because this. It was really a good movie. The first time in like what, and like the truly the first time a video game movie was actually really good, and they took the responses and they made a good movie out of it. And now we have this uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and you guys know how much I've been hyping up this movie. And unfortunately, at least in my um, ache of the woods right now, it's not coming out April 8th. It's coming out later. I'm okay. But anyways, looks like we have some uh, dirty dogs in the house, as apparently they gave it a... Most critical reviews gave it a 59%. And my question is why, because obviously I did not see the full movie yet, so I cannot make that assumption. But I knew from the trailers of Sonic 1 that that movie was going to be fantastic, and it was. And I know that from the trailers of Sonic 2, this movie is going to be even more fantastic. But, so I looked deep into it to see why critics would give it a 59%. Um, and so, there are two reasons that I found. One of them is because of the runtime. The original movie is 1 hour and 40 minutes, 100 minutes long. Whereas the second one is 122. Both of these are including credits. This shows you that... Uh, we probably need new types of uh, people to review uh, movies. And I feel like if I'm the kind of person that needs to give a good review of the Sonic movie too, then I will definitely do that. I'm going to watch the full movie first to give you my full opinion. And yes, the review will most likely be spoiler free. But anyways, that's the first uh, problem which is so stupid. It's, it's more stupid than the second one, but the second one is also pretty stupid. The second one is because it focuses more on the uh, on the uh, 
It focuses less on the human characters, it focuses less on James Mars and the Tika Sumter, and focuses more on Sonic Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, all this stuff. I mean, to call Robotnik a non-human character is a bit of a stretch because, you know, he is played by Jim Carrey, a human, but, you know, that's besides the point, but... That's also ridiculous, because one of the main problems people had with the first movie was that it was not focusing enough on Sonic and Robotnik. Now that it is focusing on Sonic and Robotnik and all the other non-human characters, the critics have a problem with that. Like, what do their minds think? <laughs> what is going on through their heads about this? But anyway, yeah. That's just like a short little news wrap of that. And yeah, that's all I have to say for that. And let's hope that the gaming space it's going like it's going great at the moment and the world's opening up again people have more opportunities to go to movie theaters hopefully movies will not be delayed for no reason and let's hope that we can have a, a capacity for e3 once again